Hey all, Father Jason Levon, priest at St. Luke's Episcopal Church in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and welcome to another virtual liturgy as we gather to celebrate the liturgy tied to Sunday, March 14th. Um, for us, uh, the fourth Sunday of Lent on our journeys this holy season of Lent. We're blessed to have you praying with us virtually, whether you're checking us out for the first time or are a regular here. And if you're joining us on Facebook or YouTube, know that in the description boxes you'll find a link to an order of worship that will guide, guide you through the entire liturgy that is about to follow. And now if you have access to that order of worship, I invite you to join in our opening hymn, Amazing Grace. <laughs> Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. Jesus said, The first commandment is this Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen.
Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Gracious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came down from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world. Evermore give us this bread, that he may live in us and we in him, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Numbers. From Mount Hor, the Israelites set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Eden. But the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord and take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses, so Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole, and whenever, whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now if you will all join me in the reading of the psalm. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Let all those whom the Lord has redeemed proclaim that he has redeemed them from the hand of the foe. He gathered them out of the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some were fools and took to rebellious ways. They were afflicted because of their sins. They abhorred all manner of food and drew near to death's door. Then they cried to the Lord in trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He sent forth his word and healed them and saved them from the grave. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy and the wonder he does for his children. Let them offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving and tell of his acts with shouts of joy. A reading from the letter, letter to the Ephesians. You were dead through the trespasses and sin in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and we were nature children of wrath, like everyone else. But God, who is at rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead, through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the in immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us, us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, 
not the result of works, so that no, no one may boast. For what we are, what we has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment that the light has come into the world, and people loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light, and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. If you've been praying with us virtually over the past several weeks, you know we've been praying for a woman named Linnea in the prayers of the people. I've known Linnea since we were both 12. Now we're 42. We met in middle school. Linnea is this gentle soul, and, and I've always um, come to lean at times on that gentleness, um, especially given how harsh uh, the world can be. Like in high school, the, the harshness of that landscape that we're navigating as teenagers, I really so valued Linnea's friendship and, and the gentleness she brought to that harsh landscape. She continues to be such a, a wonderful instrument of of love's gentleness. And we've been praying for her because eight years ago she was diagnosed with stage four metastatic breast cancer. She's far outlived her prognosis, but in recent history, the cancer has started to spread like wildfire. She suspended treatments a few weeks, a few months ago to travel with her daughters and make some memories. Um, and, and now she's very realistically preparing for hospice care. And a few nights ago on Facebook, Linnea released a video with her daughters by her side as she was blown away in gratitude. Um, unbeknownst to her, a family member had set up a GoFundMe page for the educational needs of her daughters. And it, at that time, it had raised over $80,000. 
And she spoke with, with tears in her eyes, but gratitude in her heart um, about how she's come to experience all of this love being divulged in the darkness of her night. Not just in the financial support that's going to provide some stability for her daughters, but just in all of the phone calls and texts and check-ins and visits and social media posts and comments. And she just spoke with such profound gratitude for all of the love that's been divulged in her darkness and how that's given her such a peace of heart and mind and knowing that her daughters will be cared for and surrounded by so much love, even if she's not able to be there with them physically. And in her own gratitude, she became an instrument uh, divulging dedication and, and love and comfort to all of us in that video whose hearts are breaking for Linnea and her daughters. In today's gospel, we as people of faith hear those, those coveted words that we've come to claim as the center of our lives of faith. John 3.16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only son not to condemn the world, but to save the world. And it's important to note that, that those words come in the middle of the night, in the darkness of the night. At the tail end of this conversation Jesus is having with Nicodemus, who comes to him at night and then finds himself drawn into this confounding and astounding reflection on being reborn and, and Jesus needing to be lifted up. And that only seems to, to pull Nicodemus into even more darkness. But it's in the context then of all of that darkness that Jesus divulges this, this divine dedication that we cling to at the core of our faith. That all God can do and be is love, and it's a love that longs to be divulged in the darkest places of life to bring some light and hope and healing and redemption and salvation, never condemnation. It's no wonder then why we as people of faith cling to that notion as as being at the core of our faith. Because we all know who, who have lived that, that life will bring us to some very, very dark nights of life and, and of our souls. And yet what Lent reveals is the, the beautiful gift that in the midst of that darkness we only come to find God's dedication divulged even more to us. And oh, does that, that spill out into the world in beautiful ways. It's, it's in the dedication of healthcare workers and pharmacists that's, that continually is divulged in the darkness of, of this pandemic to bring vaccines and, and hope and healing and light to us who have been enduring so much darkness. Or in the creativity of teachers that continues to be divulged in the darkness of, of virtual learning and homeschooling. Or it, it happens in the, the light and love of hospice workers that continues to be divulged in the lives of people stepping into the darkness of the dying process. Or in the generosity of the human spirit that continues to be divulged in the face of human suffering, whether that's when we donate some money to a GoFundMe page for people who are navigating cancer, or, or however we might respond in generosity in volunteering or reaching out to help and to serve others. And on and on and on it goes, because on and on and on God goes, stepping into the darkness to to divulge that divine dedication that may start as a spark in the middle of our nights, but somehow finds a way to eventually turn into a roaring Easter fire of life. Amen. We profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made flesh. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Again, always an honor and blessing to lift up those prayers you've brought to our attention. Mary asks for prayers for her mother, Josie, who died this past week, and prayers for Mary and all of Josie's family who mourn her death. May they know God's peace, presence, and comfort. Christy asks for prayers for a coworker, Natalie, who was recently diagnosed with cancer, for strength to meet the days ahead. Jim writes, I just learned today of the passing of two Bayview High School friends. I would see them every year at a Bayview High School golf outing. They were yearly participants and enjoyed the 19th hole, too. Tom and Keith are their names. May they rest in peace. Also, prayers for Jim's wife, Chris, as she continues to recover from a medical procedure. And Jim asks for prayers for himself, as this week he's having a biopsy of his prostate, something that's regularly done by his doctor, but prayers for a good result would be appreciated, Jim writes. Jeff asks for prayers for his friend, Jim, whose cancer has returned. Someone who uh, wishes to remain anonymous writes, I pray in gratitude for my birth mother, who gave me life twice, once by giving birth and then by giving me up for adoption. For all expecting women who have to make difficult decisions. Bernie asks for prayers for Chris, Debbie, and Karen for healing and peace. Steve asks for prayers for Jean's healing and for a special intention. Dean asks for prayers for Maximus, an elderly gentleman with many health issues that prevents him from getting the COVID vaccine. Also prayers for Roger, who is recovering from cardiac bypass surgery. Prayers for the thousands of missing and exploited children, adults, and their families who may never be found or returned. May they find some peace and physical and emotional safety and prayers for all family caregivers that they may receive some occasional rest and know God's grace and peace. Jan and Roberta ask for prayers for Alice's grandson. Sue offers continued prayers of gratitude for her grandson Danny's successful surgery and recovery and for his continued medical maintenance of Crohn's disease. Brian asks for prayers for his daughter Megan Sue asks for prayers for Suzanne A., who is recovering from surgery, for Dean as well, for relief of his back pain. Pam asks for prayers for herself, as she is feeling sad and overwhelmed in life. Rebecca asks for prayers for herself as well and her boys as they're navigating changes in life. Megan Ann asks for prayers for herself, for continued strength and courage to persevere. Carol asks for prayers for her son, Matthew, who just graduated from Army basic training, for all women and men serving in the armed forces at home and abroad. Julie offers prayers for Chris and her family as she heals. May God's healing power be with them and may God's peace be with the whole family. And prayers for Rebecca and her family as they walk through times of change. May God's love and peace be with them. Emma asks for prayers for two co-workers, Carrie, who just found out she has thyroid cancer, and Katie, who found out she has cervical cancer. Both have little children at home, which makes the issue all the more stressful. Cheryl asks for continued prayers for her son Alex and his physical and mental health, for everyone struggling with depression and loneliness. Amy asks for prayers for Linnea and her family for peace and strength as they face um, the dark journey of cancer together. 
Brigitte asked for continued prayers for her son Andy, who's struggling with lymphocytic leukemia. Denise asks for prayers for her nephew Logan, who recently was in a very bad ski accident and broke his right forearm in many places. Unfortunately, he's right-handed and is studying in college to be an airplane mechanic, so he needs his hand to be able to work. Prayers for strength to meet the days ahead for, for, for Logan and for a full and complete recovery. Also, prayers for Steve, who is still being treated for brain cancer, and prayers for Sharon, who is recovering from orthopedic surgery. We hold in our, our hearts and prayers here at St. Luke's some sick and homebound parish members, Chris, Bertie, Pat, and Patty. And also in joy, we celebrate with Carmen and Abby as they're um, navigating uh, pregnancy with twins, a high-risk pregnancy, so prayers for them, but, but that they may have a safe and happy and healthy delivery. And for Laurel and Walter preparing for marriage here at St. Luke's. And now I invite you to take some time and offer the prayers you're holding in your hearts to our loving and listening God. And we lift these prayers up to you, O Lord, and ask you to answer them according to your will, because we always make them in faith through your Son, Jesus, Lord, Savior, forever and ever. Amen. We make our prayer complete by praying as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Again, thank you for praying virtually with us. We're so blessed to have you, um, whether that's on Facebook or YouTube. And just before our final hymn and blessing, uh, just a few invitations to connect more deeply with us here at St. Luke's virtually in the coming week. If you're praying with us on Sunday morning, March 14th at 9 a.m., know that immediately following this, we have a virtual coffee hour at 10 a.m. And then we have a vestry meeting at 10.45 a.m. On Tuesday, March 16th, we'll have our second of a two-part Lenten series on Zoom. That'll be at 6.30 p.m. And we'll reflect together on the, 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 on the Lenten journey of trying to make room for Lenten love in our lives. Um, again, that's at 6.30 on, on Tuesday, March 16th, 6.30 p.m. on Zoom. We had a wonderful group gather last week to talk about the Lenten journey of letting go. And this time we're, we're kind of talking about taking on or making room for love and life and peace and wholeness in our lives. On Wednesday, March 17th at 8 a.m., we'll have morning prayer on Zoom. And then at 7 p.m., we're going to have Taze prayer for the first time back in church. We'll have it here in church um, in front of the cross, and that'll be at 7 p.m. And that brings me to a, a wonderful announcement that we're, we're beginning to slowly and responsibly and safely move back into some forms of limited in-person worship. So starting on March 21st. It's our hope that we'll have limited in-person worship here at St. Luke's Church um, with attendance of 25 people or less. Um, and the plan right now is to have a, a service at 4 p.m. on Saturday, March 20th, and then at 9 a.m. on Sunday, March 21st. The 4 p.m. Saturday service will be in the church hall down below, and the Sunday 9 a.m. service will be up here in church. Registrations or, or reservations are required because we have an, uh, an attendance cap and, and information will be emailed out to you about how to go about doing that. But please know that if you don't feel safe or comfortable coming to church, you don't have to. Um, we're going to keep streaming. We're going to have a, a liturgy just like this one streamed on the 21st, premiering at 9 a.m. And then following that, we'll likely have a recording of the in-person worship that will be um, that will be. 
uh, uh, uploaded to Facebook and YouTube so that if you're not able to attend in person, you can still connect with us that way. But more information will follow in the emails, uh, in emails along with all of the links to all of those events. And if you're a regular subscriber to Parish Emails, you get those links. If you would like to subscribe to Parish Emails but don't normally do so, just go to our website, stlukeschurch.com. That's stlukeschurch.com. And in the lower right-hand side of the main page, you'll find a link to, to register for parish emails or sign up for them. I'm just grateful for all of your flexibility and patience, your ongoing support throughout this pandemic. Keep staying healthy, get vaccinated if you're able, wear masks, stay distanced from each other. We're headed in a good direction. I really believe there's, there's light at the end of the tunnel. I just finished my second vaccine um, regiment last week. Um, so good things are happening. Uh, but we're so grateful for your patience and flexibility with us, your ongoing support of love and prayer and also financial support. If you're able and willing to make a financial contribution but don't normally do so, know that you can also find a link in our Facebook and YouTube description boxes that allow you to give safely and securely to St. Luke's. We wish you all a happy, healthy, and blessed, peaceful week, and thank you for all of the ongoing support you give us. And now a prayer before our final blessing. Look down in mercy, O Lord, on your people before you, and grant that those whom you have nourished by your sacraments may bring forth fruit worthy of repentance. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you all and remain with you forever. Amen. <laughs> Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.